We want Houston. Well, Yankees, you got Houston. How do you like them apples? The Astros are now up two to nothing in the best of seven ALCS, and the pitching is dynamite. They have struck out 30 batters through the first two games, and there's so much to talk about. Yes, the offense is struggling a little bit. They haven't got a lot of extra like runners hits with runners in scoring position, but they're still undefeated in the playoffs. And we'll talk about this and more in this edition of the Locked On Astros podcast. Hello and welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talk Astros. You can find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Brett's on his way. You can find him at H Town Wheelhouse, and he is always Stros, always positive, something like that. But we are both pumped up about this. The Astros took care of business at home, and yes, uh, being up two to nothing in the ALCS doesn't mean anything because now you do go to play three games at Yankee Stadium. That's going to be a ruckus crowd. We know, as we saw in the videos, that they don't not they don't like us. And apparently, Anthony Rizzo and uh, Stanton and Judge are going to bane, 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 bane. Instead of trash cans, they're going to be baning home runs or something. Uh, so it's just funny watching Yankees fans. Um, so you won in Houston, you got Houston, and Houston has so far outpitched you. Severino looked dom- dominant today, but except for one pitch that pitched to Alex Bregman and he hit the home run, uh, it may have been wind aided. And after the game, Aaron Boone admitted that that deep fly ball that Kyle Tucker caught should have been a home run if, if the roof was closed. So MLB wanted the roof open. So to take away home field advantage for the Houston Astros and it ended up backfiring on the Yankees. Cause that would have made it a, a, I believe a tie game or there may have been a runner on. I don't even care at the moment, but Kyle Tucker, he's so cool. He's so calm and he was just out there and took care of business. So um, this was a great start to the series and you know what? If you, uh, if you want to go ahead and subscribe to us, please do so. Go to YouTube. Go ahead and uh, subscribe to us. We're well, well on the way to 6,000 subscribers, and we're going to go to 10,000 subscribers. And then we're just going to keep on going because that's what we do. We love Astros fans. We love, we're love. we one of the only podcasts that does the live interaction with you because we like interacting with you. So go ahead and subscribe to us on YouTube. Watch our live stream. And go and make us your first listen on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcasts. Check out the Locked On Astros podcast. And today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. So I wonder if Bet Online would have guessed that the Yankees would have 30 strikeouts in the first uh, two games of the ALCS. That's crazy. They did go a little bit below the. 50% mark, but still, if you're going to strike out 50% of your time, that's not, you're not going to win a series. You got to put the ball in play. And so it, it was great to see the Astros just take care of business. Now, from Valdez, he showed that he's human. This is the second game in a row where he threw a ball away, but to his credit, he did allow the two unearned runs, but he dominated the Yankees. And you have Nick Totoro of the, the, Super Yankees fan. I don't know what to call him, but he's like, oh, um, Valdez isn't that good. Why are y'all struggling against him? I can't do it in my voice right now, but um, but Valdez basically limited them to two runs and seven innings on four hits, no walks, nine strikeouts. How do you like them apples? That was great to see him go out there and just dominate. Uh, the Yankees. If it wasn't for that, what? So what happened for those of y'all that didn't get a chance to watch the game was Valdez was trying to field a comebacker. Well, it wasn't really a comebacker. It was a little bit to the right towards third base of um, from Stanton, and he missed the ball, fell down, and so he went into panic mode instead of just holding the ball, 
like most pitchers did. He kind of threw the ball away like he did in uh, one of the ALDS games. So luckily, luckily, the fact that he was able to pitch out of it and uh, limit the damage to only the two runs, the two unearned runs, because they went back and actually changed it. But his ERA for the postseason so far is 1.42. So he looked good. Then you had Brian Abreu. How about that strikeout on um, Stanton? That that was 99 miles per hour on the outer side of the plate. That was a, I don't care if you want to hit it, go ahead and try to hit it, but I'm going to try to throw it past you. And Brian uh, uh, Brayu just looks like he's on a different level. It's like they unlocked a cheat code or something like that. So he's looking good. And Ryan Presley had three strikeouts. Yes, he did walk a batter to give the Yankees hope, but he did uh, strand the bases loaded. And uh, st- I believe the final out was a, a curveball that went into dirt, and then they – checked with umpire and he uh, swung through. So yes, it was a weird game overall, but the Astros won because of what Alex Bregman did that home run. That was a beauty. And uh, it it was kind of ironic because they had some sign in right field and a a guy that said, um, Alex Bregman hit it here. But you know, in that situation, he's probably not going to hit it uh, to the opposite field. He's going to go ahead and pull it to the Crawford boxes. And that's what he did. And that was a beauty. The Astros dug out new. Everybody knew that that was a home run. So that was great. And uh, Altuve, yes, he's 0 for 23 in the playoffs. He almost had a hit today, but Torres made a great play uh, to stop it. As he was falling down, he was able to throw the ball to uh, the shortstop to make the double play. So what could have been a big hit end up being a double play. So uh, yes, the offense has not been great. If you look at what they've done so far in the series, they have five wins. They have more wins than they do with hits with runners in scoring position. They only have four hits with runners in scoring position. Kyle Tucker has been one that struggled as well. Uh, but they are four for 32 with runners in scoring position in playoffs. That's why that game went 18 innings because the Astros kept on stranding runners. But why are they doing it? Because the pitching, the pitching is doing everything. I just went on with Soli on the locked on MLB podcast. And uh, he was like, what's going on? And I'm like the pitching. I mean, from Valdez, uh, he had the 25 consecutive game streak or 26 uh, game consecutive uh, streak. And, um, According to Slane on sports, Valdez 16 whiffs on the curve are their most by a pers- uh, by a pitcher on the curve in a postseason game under pitch trackings. That's since 2008. So his curveball, after he abandoned the curveball in his last start versus Mariners, he was all about it against the Yankees, and Yankees had no answer for Farmer Valdez. Yes, they had some good hits every once in a while. Yes, they took advantage of it, but – um, if you look at what's going on here, th- this team looks pretty good. And yes, uh, last year they were up to nothing in the ALCS, I believe as well, or in 2017, I should say, when they faced the Yankees. And then they went to New York. They lost three games in a row, but then they came back. That's the purpose of home field advantage. Then they won the next two games there. So um, who are you betting on? I don't know who you're betting on, but I'm betting on Houston Astros. And BetOnline is your number one source for betting football and the start of the new basketball season and playoffs. We're talking about playoffs. We're at a Locked On Astros podcast. So, of course, we're going to be talking about playoffs. Find all the latest player development, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth analysis for every game. And as always, BetOnline remains your continued source for all your wagering information with live betting, and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in on your favorite games and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online, it's where the game starts. And I'm being joined now. Are you ready, Brett? Um, I don't know if he's ready yet. Uh, He can bring himself on when he's ready. But um, the Astros are going to New York, and they're looking to make a statement. Now, you're going to have the Yankees fans, of course. They're uh, they're going to be uh, like chopping at the bit to boo Altuve and do the F Altuve chants 
do everything that they like to do because that's how Yankees fans are. But um, I think that maybe going to Yankee Stadium is going to help Altuve break into his slump. And a lot of people were saying, I don't know if you saw this, Brett, but there's a fan in the ninth inning that ran onto the field. And uh, he, um, Altuve said that when he saw that he had an Astros jersey on, he was like, oh, okay, nothing's going to happen. The fan went over there, hugged him, and wanted selfie. Altuve said, um, yeah, I'll give you a selfie, but that was before he's rested. And the fan also told him, look, I spent all my money to get playoff tickets, so I got to get a selfie with you. Uh, dude, uh, you messed up. Yeah, that's cool. I, you know, I like that storyline. I think that was neat. Um, I hope he breaks him out of his slump. But the real storyline here, Eric, is that the Houston Astros continue to defy to defy the critics. They continue to defy the people saying, "Hey, um, you know, Altuve is not hitting." I mean, Alvarez hasn't done a whole lot in these first two games, but yet it's guys like Jeremy Pena. Alex Bregman with the big hit today. The pitching, the pitching is the headliner. The pitching is the main event from Valdez. I mean, Brian Abreu, you know, getting in and out of situations. Presley coming in. You know, this this bullpen continues to be nails. And um, as I heard you mention, as I was driving home, I was listening to the show here, there, and you said, you know, when you strike out nearly 50% of the time, it's going to be hard to win a championship. And, you know, John Boy said the other day, that the Astros are by far the better team and the Astros should win this series. And barring some miracle, the Houston Astros are in 100% command. I think game three is very winnable. I don't care who they have pitching right now because our pitching is better. End of story. That's just the bottom line because I said so. I just, I just really am enjoying watching the way that the Astros are winning these games. These one-run games, we were not winning last year in the playoffs. You play a game like this against the Braves in 2021, you're crushed. The Yankees, they're no competition. What I would like, though, in the two games that they – in the next two games they have, whether they're the last two games of this series or whether they go to a game you know, five or six or whatever happens, they do have to spark more than a three-run home run. They do have to get more guys on and more guys pulled in. But even with limited runs, I'm not worried about this team. I've said that from the beginning, and I'll continue to say it. And let me just let me just say this to Yankees fans. You may say that 2017 has an asterisk. That's fine. You may say, because I've already seen Twitter blow up with, oh, well, they cheat. Oh, well, they're cheaters. Well, until your team is not a double S cheeks in the playoffs, don't talk about our asterisks, okay? Because you guys have completely failed in the playoffs and you can't get through us. The American League runs through Houston, period. And if you would have told me, Eric, in 2011, that the Astros in the American League would be top dog, would be the standard, I would have said there's no way. Tito boy, Go get some like Sparrow pizza or Totino's pizza rolls or whatever you have, because let me tell you something, the Astros are coming and the Astros are scared and you're Matt Carpenter and you're Josh Donaldson. Like, really? Like, that's what you got? You're Aaron Judge striking out. You're Tony Rizzo. Hey, Tony, forget about it. I'm sorry. Forget about it. Houston is in control. You know what, New York? You got a problem and it's us. All right, so Garrett Cole's going to be on mound. I'm sure we may do another podcast before game three of the ALCS, but Garrett Cole is somebody who's um, pitched very well in the playoffs, but he's also has his duds as well. But uh, something that you may not know is that Lance McCullers in his career has a better ERA in his uh, postseason career than uh, Garrett Cole does. So that's going to be an interesting matchup. It's not going to be as uh, – like a lot of people are saying, oh, Garrett Cole's aren't on the mound. He's our ace. Uh, it's automatic win for the Yankees. I think the Yankees are going to go ahead and take care of business. And uh, and Cole is one and two versus Yankees. Let's see what happens. Um, yeah, he but he has a 2.57 ERA, and he's still striking out nine hitters per nine innings pitch. So, yes, he, he may be one and two in his career, but uh, those games he's still pitching well. So 
And McCullers in his career is 2 and 0 with a 2.97 ERA with 10.7 strikeouts per nine innings pitch. So it seems like when the Astros face the Yankees, uh, they, they just have this whole other um, mindset. And uh, like that, the focus on that fly ball by Kyle Tucker, he didn't have to, hopefully he didn't have to worry about a fan interfering with that. But uh, Aaron Boone said that, I don't know if you heard that earlier, but yeah. the, if, if the roof was closed, <laughs> then that would have been a home run. And uh, that was 106 miles per hour off the bat and the wind made it die. And then you saw the swirly effect by the outfielders. All the outfielders are saying, you have to go left. You have to go left because the ball is going like that. And uh, we have to keep in mind that I think the roof has only been open maybe three times this year during the regular season, maybe that's too much, two times. So even the Astros players have not played with the roof open at Minute Maid Park. So uh, it was a whole different dynamic. And I know a lot of people are saying, well, MLB dictated that this happened, but uh, the Astros have a certain a set of rules that they if do. this happens, you have to have a roof, op- roof open. The Astros players like the roof closed. The Astros management likes the roof closed, so that's typically why they do it. But if you have an open roof, why not play in front of that? It's beautiful it, day for baseball. Yeah, it has to be. It's basically under 85 degrees. The humidity has got to be a certain level, and it's got to be like 0% chance of rain. There is some magic formula there, and I don't know if Major League Baseball sets that for each stadium or what, but – I think every stadium should have a retractable roof. I mean, I, I don't think playoffs should be delayed by freaking rain. I mean, that's that's the most absurd thing I've ever heard. And if Aaron Boone should be pissed because Major League Baseball didn't let them play the night before and get a day rest, I think that would have benefited the Yankees. But roof open, roof closed, who cares? Like, like we're like I'm not going to debate that with somebody. Okay, I was at World Series Game 2 last year. The roof was open. It was loud as hell. I thought the roof was closed at one point. It was so loud. It has nothing to do with anything. I'm pretty sure the players don't come to the ball field and go, gosh darn it, the roof is open. We're, we're going to have a disadvantage and lose the game. They don't do that. They play outdoor 90% of the time anyways. And, you know, Aaron Boone making excuses for his team. Like, why isn't he ripping his hitters? Why isn't he ripping all the strikeouts? Why isn't he getting up in their crawl and telling them why they're failing, Eric? That's the problem. The problem isn't the roof open. The problem is your team sucks at the plate right now. The Astros aren't playing great, but they sure as are doing a whole heck of a lot better. You know why? Because they have two wins. The Yankees have zero. They now have won five games in a row in the playoffs. And this is with Altuve not hitting. If you can't beat Houston without Altuve, if you can't hit Houston, beat Houston without Jordan Alvarez doing something, then you got problems. And your $380 million investment or whatever it was into Garrett Cole has not paid off. Let's just call it what it is. It has not paid off. Yeah, um, from Valdez, uh, he, uh, I know we've talked about, well, how deep are they going to leave the starters in? But he pitched seven innings, and I know he had that error, and I'm sure that people are asking him about that. But uh, overall, he really kept the uh, Yankees under control. He had a lot of ground balls, but uh, I didn't realize this until somebody mentioned it. Frommer was third in the league with hardest hit baseball average exit velocity uh, because he gets a lot of ground balls. And so that's why uh, you you see the Astros do a lot of shifts with Frommer Valdez, and they they want the best infielders out there. So it makes you wonder how will he do next year when they ban the shift or what when they kind of limit the shift. So uh, right. definitely a situation to look at. But the the fact that the Astros ha- are up two to nothing now you have Lance McCullers, even though it has not been confirmed that it's going to be Lance McCullers. And then Christian Javier, even though it has not been confirmed, but when you have a strikeout pitcher like Christian Javier and a team that strikes out a lot, why not throw out your best strikeout mm. pitcher in Christian who Javier? Who threw a combined no-hitter, who right. had 14 strikeouts in seven innings. But you know what? Why wouldn't you go Lance McCullers in, in game three? Why? I mean, why wouldn't you? Why would you save him for game four? Let McCullers crush the soul of the Yankees. 
Um, somebody asked, uh, what's my opinion on, um, I think his name's Carlos. What's the opinion of moving Altuve later in the lineup? Uh, no, not with a future all-star. I mean, not future all-star, a future hall of famer. <laughs> yeah. I'm already predicting 2023 all-star Jose Altuve. Eric's you- too early all-star game lineup. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, with a guy like Altuve, you're going to give him a chance and, I thought he almost had that hit today and uh, Torres made a great play to stop that ball and somehow got a double play out of it. But I think that going to Yankee stadium, it's going to awaken the beast and Altuve is going to come out and he's going to be like, Oh, for 23, I'll show you Oh, for 23. I'll go seven for 23 against you. Oh, wow, man. Eric's Eric's up in the ante. Um, Jigsaw's. Uh, says, uh, I don't want to read the whole name. Jigsaw says, what do the Astros need to do to win both games in Yankee Stadium? I think the you have to keep the Yankees in the yard. You can't let them go long. I, I don't I don't want a Rizzo solo shot. I don't want to see a Judge solo shot. All those solo shots rarely beat you with this team. I, I really think the Astros pitchers, the starting pitchers, have to keep the zeros on the board for you know, for the Yankees, they've got to keep the ball in the yard, but the Astros absolutely have to come out. They've got to do something to, to neutralize the crowd and the energy in the stadium because the crowd, and the energy was crazy in Seattle, but this is New York and it's different. And you're going to hear the chance and you're going to hear the hate, but that's one thing that Yankees fans do well that I'll commend them is you never doubt if they're going to show up. You don't have local radio shows saying, ah, that crowd was kind of dull, you know? And, you know, in Houston, Houston was getting a lot of shade after after game one, Eric. Um, a lot of the local radio stations were saying, Houston, can't you be louder? And someone goes, well, if all the regular folks that go to regular season games were able to attend and the ticket prices weren't so high, maybe it would be louder. Because all it just seems like a lot of people that end up buying the tickets, the tickets are so pricey at this point, you get peop- certain people out of the stadium. So, your responsibility as a fan, if there is another game in the LCS or if the next game is the World Series, y'all better be loud as heck out there. Y'all better show up. That's one thing they do in the Bronx. That's one thing I kind of admire that crowd for is they are dying the wool. They bleed those pinstripes, and we are hardcore fans. And I'm not saying we're not hardcore, but if they neutralize the crowd, if they keep the ball in the ballpark, I think the I, I think the Astros take Game Three. Um, Bregman has 14 postseason home runs, and that's the most in MLB history for a third baseman. So now he sits behind Altuve with 23, Springer with 19, Correa with 18, and then Bregman with 14. So um, and McCullers had to say like you heard a lot of names in that list that are no longer here. And uh, McCullers kind of addressed that. He said, I mean, we've lost like generational talents and we still find a way to win a hundred plus games and stay competitive guys just coming up, keep coming up and doing their things. It's pretty amazing to watch these young kids. And one of those guys is Jeremy Pena. And he played that, that little carom off of Bregman was great where it, like that most, was a great most play. players would have just been like, you know what? I'm going to give up on the ball, uh, Bre- let Bregman deal with it. But it just, he was like, oh, the ball's coming to me. Let me go and try to get out at first. And they did it just in time. And there's a reason why Jeremy Pena is one of the three finalists for the gold glove at shortstop. Uh, the other one is Xander Bogarts and Carlos Correa. So yeah. that's going to be an interesting matchup. But we, yes, we look at all the errors that Pena has had this year. But he's been at one of the top defensive run saved and um, fielding percentages all year. So, yes, he does make the errors, but he does make great plays. On that note, Kyle Tucker was one of the three nominated um, for right field as well. And he showed today why he's out there. So it, it, it was just amazing how the Astros just keep on pitching well. Their defense keeps on playing well. And the hitting, it's just got to come around a little bit more. You can't be four for 32 with runners in scoring position in the playoffs and expect to keep on being undefeated, honestly. Well, they are to this point. <laughs> I'm just saying they they are to this point. You know, um, I remember Jerry Pena, they, they said something to him about um, n- no team has ever done something, whatever it was, in the ALDS, and he goes, 
we have, you know, like, that's kind of like the thing, like you, you you're not going to win in the playoffs. If Jose Altuve doesn't hit, we are, you're not going to win in the playoffs. If Jordan isn't hitting all these home runs, we are. And I think, <laughs> I think next year's theme should be, we are, <laughs> or we do, you know, the, the level, Eric, of competitiveness and fire that this team has, even in a three to two game. Okay. I know the Yankees got those two runs back and people were probably freaking out and panicking. But this bullpen has been absolutely phenomenal. And the fact that we can have a conversation where we're going, well, you know, McCullers probably game three, but gosh, if you put Javier in there and we haven't even seen her Keaty. And someone asked if Ryan Stanek retired. Ryan Stanek hasn't been used. That's been a bigger mystery. And, and I haven't looked into all of the comments that he's put out the last couple of days. I'm going to go back and look into that. But between now and then, I'm going to see if there, he gives more reasoning behind that. And I don't know. I mean, you may have heard something. I just haven't heard it. I just – Stanek is being saved for certain situations. I, I don't know what he's being saved for. But I guess – Whatever they're doing, Eric, is working. And remember I told you, and I told everybody on this show, the X factor for this year's playoffs is actually Dusty Baker. And Dusty Baker has conducted a master class on managing this bullpen. All right, the Astros' margin of victory in um, in the games in the playoffs so far, one, two, one, two, one. So does that mean tomorrow they're going to win by two runs? Uh, hey, that's a little pattern. I guess that's a math teacher. I like that. the pattern. There you go. Ooh, pattern in numbers. I love that. Um, um, I don't care if it's one, two, or ten. I just want the dub. Yes, and so I know teams that go up two to nothing in ALCS. There's a high probability that they go on to win, but Yankee Stadium is a different animal. And uh, Jeff Passan says that Game Three Saturday in Bronx, it's a must win for the Yankees. I do agree that it oh, is yeah. a must win with your ace on the mound. You have to win that game if you are the Yankees. And so what I'm seeing from the Yankees so far is yes, they have some great hitters. They have some hitters that strike out a lot. They have some pes- pesky hitters like Bader. They finally had some sense to put him at leadoff. If, if he's hitting all these home runs and scoring all these runs, why not put him in front of judge? So I think that Boone made the right call there, but in this game, Bader only got one hit and struck out once. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> I just found something on Twitter. Um, Kyle um, Higashikawa, I think it's how you say it, on Alex Bregman's three-run home run, and this is a quote. I think even Bregman will admit it. He didn't really hit it well off the bat but he hit it well enough to get it out. What, what does that even mean? And even on TBS, they were showing that, oh, he didn't hit it at the right part of the barrel, but Alex Bregman oh knows my. this ballpark. Yeah, what? Alex Bregman knows this ballpark. He's been playing here for quite a while. That That is what an inferior team does. They make excuses for their lack of production. Kids, this is a test. This is only a test. You are either a victim or a victor. And if a Yankees fan tells you about 27 rings, just talk about this game and Alex Bregman's shouldn't have happened home run. And you will hear the victim mentality. They have gone from victorious storied franchise to petulant child whining about, oh, but they cheated us out of a title. No, you haven't been there since 09, bozos just stop, stop already. And you know what? We're the big kid on the block and you know what? It's okay. We're going to bully you and we're going to body you when we get a chance. I'm just, I, I'm just tired of like the absolute catatonic state of Yankee fandom where there's still this great world champion. Sorry, these aren't your father's Yankees. And you know what? This ain't your dad's Astros. This is a whole different ball club. The Astros still with all that said, still have to win game three. They still have to win game four. They still have to win two more games. And the Astros know that better than anybody. I mean, look, I'm still pissed that they stole the space shuttle from us. Okay, I'm still upset about that. They can keep that space shuttle. I don't care. I want a World Series. That's what I want. Um, the Astros are 8-2 and two in their last uh, 10 
home games against the Yankees, including a postseason. So that's pretty impressive. I believe that stat is correct. And uh, so I read an article about Justin Verlander and how he, during the game, realized, okay, I'm doing something wrong. And he made the adjustment. And for him to have the veteran presence to be like, look, it's not working. Uh, He was at 57 pitches after the third inning. And he uh, surrendered a 112 mile per hour double to Stan uh, to put runners on second and third. Then all of a sudden, it just clicked for him. So my goal, or not my goal, but Justin Verlander's goal is probably to keep that same beast mode for the next game he pitches in, whether that is in the ALCS or is that going to be in the World Series because of a sweep. I I think the Yankees are too good of a team to. Uh, to be swept. That's my honest opinion. I think they're going to win at least one game in New York. So expecting a sweep may be too much. Uh, so we'll we'll have to see how it plays out. Now, okay. So so let's so let's so let's let's kind of break this down a little bit. Usually, okay. Let me let me add usually to your phrase. Usually, expecting a sweep from the Yankees would be a very unwise move, baseball wise. Because we saw in 2019 and 2017, they took us to game seven, took us to game six. They were ultra, they were more competitive than they are now. Eric, this team's not competitive. They got 30 plus strikeouts in two games. They're just simply not cutting it. Now, they will have energy, they will show fight, they may take a lead. But okay, that's great. They have to win the game, okay? We led every game that we played them in the regular season, led every game except for two innings, and those were the two walk-offs. They don't have that kind of magic going on right now. I don't know if you've seen Aaron Judge's facial expressions. I, I mean, he he just he looks like he's trying to figure things out. Now, I hope that he doesn't figure things out. And again, I say all these things with all due respect to the Yankees because they do have some gamers out there. They do have talent. But the Astros pitching is simply that good. And, dude, how more elite can Presley be, Eric? How more nails can this guy be? I absolutely love the way he comes out on the field now, the lights flashing, the Johnny Cash song. I mean, that I never thought that I would get so pumped hearing Johnny Cash blared in a baseball stadium. It's phenomenal, man. And it is a nice bow tie on a game and everybody that seems like press has got us press has got us. And I'd love it. Um, I am never going to be advocate of anybody running onto the field, especially in the ninth inning of yeah, a no. game two of a one run game. No, when Ryan Presley is trying to focus, you don't do that. But the only good thing maybe comes out of this. It, and this is not baseball analytics or anything. This is just like, what if, that fan took all of Altuve's mojo, bad mojo with him, and all of a sudden he starts hitting. Again. There, that would be awesome. That'd be awesome. Hey man, um, Dab Daddy showed up. This is this is a this is the gentleman Will at the stadium that actually gives Framber his peanuts. And they made a shirt with Framber holding the peanut thing. And I'm like, pay the man. I'm like, give this guy some proceeds, man. <laughs> My guy Will, I saw him a couple games ago, man. He 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 does a great job there on the first base side. So if you see him, grab some water, some brews, whatever from him. But uh, dude, the stadium's electric. I love when I love when Bregman hit that home run. It, it just it was like okay, that's what we needed. But I was honestly surprised that they didn't put more crooked numbers on the board throughout the game. And that's yeah. that's what I would have liked to see. And that goes back to not hitting with runners in scoring position. They, they've been struggling with that. And uh, so Dusty Baker said he's not worried about Jose Altuve. Altuve is going to hit. He's been hitting all his life. And uh, he asked if getting his first World Series t- a title as a manager drives him. He says, victories drive me and I'll get it. And he also said that if he wins it, he wants to win another one because he likes the consistency. So he uh, that means that he he's thinking about coming back next year. And uh, he said this was before the game. If I can enjoy every day like I enjoyed the last four days, I'll be a very happy man. But this is to address Ryan's question right here. Is Stanek a lied? 
So this is what he said before today's game. He'll get in there big time. And I talked to him about it. I just said, you know, you can't pitch everybody all the time. And our starters have been doing so well. But I've got to get him in there in order to keep him sharp. So Brian Abreu, he came in and he looked like the Predator. He looked like the Terminator. He looked determined to just uh, get Stan out. And he was up there throwing 99 miles per hour. And Stan looked overmatched in that matchup. And then Presley did his job. So in this game, I'm okay with what Dusty's doing. And in game one, I'm okay with Dusty's doing. But he does need to get Stan again. No, he does. I And I'm just wondering, like, is there something there? Like, I I always hate to speculate, is a player hurt when you don't know? Because then, like, one person hangs on your words and they go, oh, well, they said on this show the other day, blah, blah, blah. Like, uh, it's got to be matchups, Eric. It's got to be mathematics. It's got to be something metric-driven. It's not that Stanek can't do it because Stanek has been nails. And I know because I've talked to him twice and he he wants to be out there yeah, absolutely wants to be out there so but right now you know eric it's working so it's really hard to, like i think it's fine to question it because i do but i don't question it because i question like the results right like i think right. the re- results are different right like let's say he puts naries in naries blows it well, what's your default? Oh, well, where's Stanek or where's this person? It's been working. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. There's going to be some spots in the ALCS, and if they move on to the World Series for Stanek to shine, and that's probably got to be a little frustrating because of how much of a competitor I know he is, but he's also a team player. And I didn't I didn't get to mention this because I didn't even really see this because I was at the game um, with Chaz's home run. I didn't realize – and maybe we talked about it and I forgot. I didn't realize that, like, Verlander. The whole dugout, yeah. Verlander, yeah, I mentioned Chomp. it. Yeah, I okay. said Verlander okay. was doing it. Okay, that's right. I forgot. I just I just saw more stuff on it today, and I'm just reminded of how this team really roots for each other. I mean, look, not that other teams don't root for each other, but this team, I think more than any team that I've ever seen, really does root for the other success. And especially when someone like Verlander struggles with run support, when his offense, you know, puts them on his back, puts them on their back, and they're successful, you know, you got to love it. You got to love it. But Eric. Are you ready? Hold yeah, on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, this is a quote from Channel Room on Twitter. Martin Maldonado with a grin on Frommer Valdez. We told him he has PFPs tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta you, love it are, after the game. Are you talking about the toss that he threw? Yeah. to Yuli from the from the like the little squib ground ball. Yeah, I saw that. It, it it looked almost unnatural, but I think he was trying to place it over the runner, right? Like he was he didn't want to hit the runner in the in the left shoulder. Um, yeah, that that's great. And Eric. Garrett Cole said that um, the biggest thing about facing the Astros is that you know the the these guys. He's pitched. Um, for these guys and uh they've seen him in the playoffs before uh so or, or maybe not in the playoffs but they've seen him before so he said it's just another level of famil- familiarity with him and uh, with the type of veterans and type of players that they had in the big situations over the years so that's what has got them to the level that they're at and it's what sustains them probably so he's actually giving astro some props there so um just saying that the veterans are who's leading them. And so Altuve, yes, he's 0 for 23, but he's still doing stuff uh, to help the team win. And I swore that was almost a hit today. So, um, Brett, oh, you yeah. got anything else you want to close out the show? No, right. Um, I, I don't think that Jose Altuve's 0 for slump right now is necessarily terrible. I would like to see him start getting hits. But this is a complete team. And at the end of the day, you have to trust the process. And sometimes things don't work out. And there's no one grinding harder than Jose Altuve out there and wants to hit more than Jose Altuve. The difference between us and them, we don't boo our guys when they're over. We got their back. So if nobody's got you, Jose Altuve, Locked on Astros podcast and Locked on Astros Nation. 
we got you. And your boy out there who comes to give you a hug on the field, we all got your back. We want Houston. We yeah. want Houston. You no, they got don't. Houston. You hey, you know, you come live in Houston. Houston. Taxes are lower. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. We don't want uh, – there's already enough Yankees fans down here. We don't need any more. But you got Houston. Yeah, that's true. Now you got going. a problem. So hopefully the Astros take care of business in New York. But if not, they'll uh, maybe at least uh, maybe play one more home game. Uh, so definitely one more home game. So we'll see. Well, I guess if they There's win two games. in New York. No, yeah. dude, let's – Screw it, man. Let's freaking close it out in New York. Who wants to nah, we don't want a six and seven here. We want no. we want in it in New York. Let's freaking put it to rest. Let's go. All right. So that's all we got for this edition of the Locked On Astros Podcast. Make sure you check us out on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to us and help us get to 10,000 subscribers and make us your first listen every day on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, and wherever you listen to your podcast, check out the Locked On Astros Podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. He is Brett H. Town Wheelhouse. We are the Locked On Astros podcast and Ghost Rose.